Well, good evening, good people. Mark Holmes here. As always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day. You know, it amazes me. It amazes me because, you know, doing YouTube is it's fun it's it's it can be fun although it can be very difficult it can be like a job no it is a job and it's crazy how youtube has changed my life in so many different ways uh, meeting aaron the other day who's been a fan for a number of years and things you know let me have all of these bobbleheads and stuff or thinking about Rhonda, um who of course her and her hubby gave me this incredible chef knife right here um meeting clarence who scared the pajibis out of me um saying you're mark holmes and this you know you get a guy that's about six foot five and big and he comes out and says you're mark i don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing but even meeting philly 500 and talking with dan salio and stuff it has been incredible which is great because it outweighs some of the people that just really are sick now i'm gonna say you know my opinions are my opinions and you know you don't have to it, it shouldn't bother you what i think i'm not paying your bills i don't work for the dallas cowboys i have no control over anything i wish i did i wish i had control over jerry jones it could make him do what i wanted him to do the reality is i'm just joe the fan and i'm gonna like some things i'm gonna hate some things and so on and some people just really get bent out of shape. And typically, I just kind of let the things go by. But I just want to give you guys a taste. Because, you know, we'll sit here and we'll talk about a guy on the football field. And we'll talk about, that guy's a scrub. He's a bum. Get him out of here. Knowing that you couldn't get anywhere near to a professional football field or that level. Even the very worst guy on a roster. You could not get anywhere close to it. So for you to talk about how somebody is a bum and everything else is kind of kind of funny to me. Now, there's some guys out there that are better than others, but we're talking about, you know, the one thousandth of one percent of people in the world playing professional football. Be that as it may, I want you guys to understand some of the stuff that I get. I got this one. I'm not going to say the person's name because then that'll give him, you know, probably he'll get a Woody and do all kinds of things and stuff, you know, because it'll say, oh, they mentioned my name as much as they say they hate me. How does it feel to have Dax dick in your mouth 24-7? It's insane to see a fat 60-year-old man obsessed with a guy so much that doesn't know who you are at all. And... Why do you even do a keto diet when you never lose any weight to begin with? You're just some obese slob who can't stop eating on camera and everyone finds it disgusting. Wow. I guess this is like a mukbang and that the 133,000 people just watch because they're disgusted. They like to watch disgusting things. I, I guess. I guess that's what it is. But my, my recommendation to this guy is maybe you shouldn't watch if it bothers you that much. But I'm betting, <laughs> I'm betting you're sitting there watching every single thing I do because you're hooked. And that's okay. That's okay. And if you think that you saying things like that's going to really bother me, it doesn't. Because, see, I'm a kind of guy who I learned a long time ago. Don't give a fuck about what somebody else thinks. I care about what Miss Tracy thinks, my kids thinks, my parents think. Forgive me, Dad, for cussing. I'm sorry. I don't care. If somebody doesn't like me, that's your problem. That's not mine. And the thing I've learned in life, and this, this is true, because, see, if people come up to you when you look your worst, then you know that they're actually looking for you, the person, as opposed to, you know, I got the suit or I got the car and this, that, and the other. Because they look and said, oh, there's money. Let me go, you know, hook up with that guy. And see, those kind of people are fair weather friends. So be that as it may. Appreciate you worrying about my health. Anyway, 
I discovered something interesting here today. You know, I'm always thinking about numbers and things like that and, and so on. And I saw somewhere there were, maybe, maybe do I have it on? I may have screenshotted it. But I don't think that, that the numbers were completely accurate. Sometimes people will put stuff on that may or may not be 100% right. Okay, so this Brittany Bowen said, Since Dan Quinn left the Cowboys, they're 3-3 three and three on the season. Worst run defense in the NFL. And see, that's where I'm kind of like, um, if you look at the numbers, they're not quite, they're, they're close, but not quite. Most points per game allowed in the NFL allows the 24 most yards per game. Um, worst fourth down defense gave up 168 points in six games. Three straight blowout losses uh, at home. Um, I'm not sure that these numbers are right because I thought it was 167 points the last four games at home. So I'm not sure how we get 168 points. I think it's actually more than that. But be that as it may, it's bad. But as I was going through, because I, I, I read that and then I was checking the numbers out because I was going through and looking at the Cowboys thing because w when, when they said the worst run defense in the NFL, I said, my God, because we also have the worst running offense right now. You know, we're averaging 3.5 yards per carry, which is the worst in the NFL, and we're second worst in actually running the, the for yards. So that's where I was like, damn, I was going to, my video was going to be, damn, Ka Jerry, you had two jobs, improve the running game and improve the run stopping. And I was like, you went from, you know, 16th last year at stopping the run um, and 14th at running the football to 32nd in boats. But then I was like, no, it's not quite that way. But here's what I discovered when I was doing this. Um, oops, wrong one. So this is the Carolina Panthers, okay? What's interesting is, is we'll, we'll look at Carolina Panthers and their 15th um, at stopping the run, okay, down there. But when I was looking at yardage running the football and stopping the run, you'll see what they're running the football at 4.7 yards a carry. I'd love to have that. And they are giving up 4.5. But they're plus 0.2. Okay. So you're like, yeah, and let's look at some other ones. This is, let's see, what team is this? This is New England. New England is horrendous. New England, of course, is horrendous. They are rushing for 4.6 yards, and they're giving up 4.6 yards. So at least it's balanced out, right? Okay, let's look at a couple more. This one is the Eagles. The Eagles, which you kind of look at and say, eh, they're not really that great. They're on the negative side. They're running the ball 4.7, which is really good, but they're giving up 4.8, which is kind of crazy when you think about the defensive front that they have. Okay, but, you know, you see, typically when the numbers are about even, you're about average. You're about 500. When you're positive, and this is... This is Minnesota. Now, here's where it's interesting. Minnesota is only rushing the ball 4.1, but they're only giving up 3.6. So they're a half a yard up on this. They're 5-0. and oh. See, what you try and do with statistics is you try and find a pattern. Now, here you have Kansas City, which is 5-0. and oh. This is kind of the one of those ones where you look at it and say, well, damn, they're only getting 3.9 yards a carry, which is true. Not a lot. But they're only giving up 3.7. Again, 0.2. They're on the positive side of it. This is Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay. Let's look at Tampa Bay's. I passed it. Tampa Bay, which is playing really well. 5.3 they're running. And 4.7 giving up. That's still giving up a lot in comparison. But they're still a half a yard over half yard, 0. 0.6 ahead. This one is the Giants. The Giants, which are not a good team. You see, this is the worst one. They're only getting 3.9 per carry 
and they're giving up 5.2. Hmm. San Francisco, which is having a little bit more of a problem, but they're still one of the best teams. They're getting five and giving up 4.4. Let's go to, uh, not the Kim Anders. Where's my Cowboys? Hmm. Where'd my Cowboys go? Hold up. Okay. That's Carolina. Okay, let me let me get the Cowboys. Sorry. Now let's look at the Cowboys here. The Dallas Cowboys. This is mind blowing. And they've got to change this big time. The Cowboys are rushing the football 3.5 yards, and they're giving up 4.5. Bro, that's not good. You are literally giving up every time they run the ball versus us a yard. Now, we saw where two-tenths of a yard, teams are undefeated. You know, two-tenths or more. The teams are playing great. You look at Minnesota, people will say, well, Sam Darnold, you know, he, oh my God, Sam Darnold is doing great. Well, you see what his team is doing. They're a half a yard ahead in that matrix. The Cowboys were a yard behind on it. And that is exactly what Tom Brady said. The Cowboys, you don't have to look very far. The running game. The running game. You got Troy Aikman talking about the routes. The route running is lazy. You can't run the football. Your receivers are running lazy routes. Your defense can't stop the run. And so I get accused of having Dak's manhood in my mouth, that he's the problem. Okay. It is what it is. Um, we'll talk about this more during our live stream at 9 o'clock tonight, and hopefully you guys tune in. And, dude, I guess I hope you tune in because I know you can't stop watching. Have a good one, and I'll see you guys soon. Peace.